It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land, until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now, when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly, this man was innocent. Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ. On this Easter Sunday, hear again the story that changed our world, the story of resurrection of Jesus, as it was recorded in the book of Luke. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices that they had prepared and they went to the tomb. They found the stone was rolled away. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men with clothes that were gleaming stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, he's risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to make no sense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, bending over, saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Yeah. 
Good morning. Easter morning. This is the day we celebrate and worship a risen Savior. He is not on the cross anymore. He has risen. May we pray together. Eternal Father, we give you thanks for all of your love and mercy and grace to us. Thank you for your creative wisdom, making this a beautiful world. Thank you for the sustenance that you make possible for all of us. Thank you for your redemptive efforts, how you always bring us back to you, and how in your heart you want more than anything else for all of your children to be in heaven with you someday. Help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to share this wonderful news of your love and your mercy and your grace and how your Savior died on the cross to take our sin. Let us go free and be with you forever. Bless us today as we worship, as we sing heart songs to you, and as we praise you for your love and all of your goodness to us. In the name of our Lord Christ, we pray. Amen.
Good morning. We hope this worship video is meaningful to you and your family on this Resurrection Sunday. Praise God, the tomb is empty and we can have a relationship with Him. I want to encourage you today not to forget to worship by giving. Yes, the business of the church continues and that is dependent upon your gifts, but that is not the reason why we give. As Christians, giving is an act of worship. It's an act of obedience. It's an act of exercising our faith. As we give of our finances during these uncertain times, we're telling God, I trust you. So I encourage you to give as God leads. As you consider your tithe, do not forget this is the season for giving to missionaries in North America through the Annie Armstrong Easter offering and the Global Missions offering. These missionaries are dependent upon these offerings to support the work they are doing across North America. As you give, take a moment and pray for those missionaries and the work they are doing, especially in areas affected by this virus. You can give your tithe and offering securely through our website, www.mysabc.org. Look for the online giving tab at the top right of our webpage. Or if you prefer, you can also mail a check to the church office as we have someone checking our mail daily. Thank you for worshiping with us today. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to Now at his feet we bow The one who wore our sin and shame Now robed in majesty The radiance of perfect love Now shines for all to Bye. 
body there will not remain. I got us from the grave. I got us from the On this Easter Sunday morning, let me invite you to look in your Bible to the second letter to the Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Paul writes, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through Him, the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. The service was over. The sanctuary, which had been packed to capacity, was now almost empty. The staff gathered at the front to share our feelings and our memories of what we had just shared. A beautiful, worshipful service led by Sandy Patty. But as we stood there at the front reflecting on the evening, a question arose among us. You see, the church's grand piano had been moved from the platform to the floor to make arrangements for the concert. Now, with most everyone gone, that same huge piano needed to be moved from the floor up the steps back to the platform. The few of us who were there, all church employees, looked at one another and we knew what we had to do. We took care of it. We got on our cell phones and called for lots of help. That grand piano was certainly heavy, but not any heavier than some of the questions that we carry within our hearts today. Does my life really matter? Can anything wash away the mistakes I've made? Can I begin again? Is there hope for me and my loved ones beyond this life? Is your heart burdened by one of those heavy questions? Then you've come to the right place on the perfect day. This is Easter Sunday, the day God answered the heaviest questions of our hearts. On Easter morning, through his resurrection from the dead, Jesus said yes to every promise of God. Yes, your life matters because you matter to God. Yes, you can be forgiven. Yes, you can begin again. Yes, you have hope. Why? Because Jesus is risen from the dead. Death couldn't snuff out the meaning of his life, so nothing can take away the meaning of the lives of those who belong to him. After dying for every sin you and I ever committed, he rose from the dead in victory over sin so that you and I can live through him in victory over sin. When his enemies thought they brought his life to an end, he made a new beginning. He rose from the dead. Therefore, those who live for him can overcome the enemies we face, and we can make wonderful new beginnings. 
When Jesus burst out of the grave, he proved that death is not the end for those who belong to him, but the doorway to eternal life. Easter morning, God said, yes, my promises are true. So your life has meaning. You can be forgiven. You can begin again. You have hope. Easter morning, God said yes. But that's only one side of the Easter experience, according to our passage. When you hear God's answer to your biggest questions, that answer being the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, there is, there's a response that you and I must make in our hearts and with our lives. Every day, through the presence of the resurrected Christ in our lives, Christians say amen to what God has done and bring glory to his name. Amen is a great word. It means more than the prayer is over or it's time to eat or church is finally ended or even score one for the preacher. When you say amen, you're saying, I believe. God can be trusted. I'm standing on this promise. I'm building my life on this truth. And so can you. We shout the amen to Easter. We can say amen with our words. When you read the scriptures, join other Christians in worship, sing the songs of the faith, speak words of encouragement, tell the story of what Jesus has done for you, or share the gospel with a person who's never heard it. You are saying amen to what God has done. You're saying amen to the resurrection of Jesus with your words. But we also say amen with our lives. One of my dear friends in the first church I pastored was a dairy farmer named Fred Newton. Fred was in church every Sunday, though he couldn't hear a word of what was said. Fred lost his hearing as an adult after an illness in which he suffered a very high fever. And I often wondered what Fred thought about his brothers and sisters in the church because he couldn't hear all the words we said or the promises we made or the songs we sang. Fred could only see our actions. The only amen he could experience was the ones we said with our lives. This world is full of people like Fred. They're not all physically deaf, but they don't really hear our religious words and spiritual songs and big promises. They're watching and wondering if anyone's life has been changed by the good news of Easter. How do we rise to such a challenge? How can you and I live lives that say amen to the miracle of Easter? Our passage tells us exactly how. We say amen through him. That verse ends with the words, through him, through Christ, through our risen Savior. The amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Desmond Tutu the Archbishop of the Anglican Church in South Africa was once asked what led him to become an Anglican priest. He replied that he grew up in the days of apartheid, that cruel system of segregation that treated black South Africans as second-class citizens with few rights and no respect. One day, Desmond was walking down the sidewalk with his mother when they saw that coming the other way was a white man. 
the law of apartheid required a black person to step off of the sidewalk and wait until the white person passed by. But as Desmond and his mother drew nearer to this white man, to the little boy's amazement, this man stepped off of the sidewalk and tipped his hat to Desmond's mom as a sign of greeting and respect. After they passed this man, Desmond asked his mother, why did that man do that? Because, she answered, he is an Anglican priest and a man of God. In that moment, Desmond says, seeing the difference in that man's life, I knew that I wanted to be an Anglican priest and even more, a man of God. We aren't here to prove the resurrection of Jesus as a lawyer would argue and win a case in court. We're called to demonstrate his resurrection power through our changed lives. Our changed lives. The amen we proclaim through him will reach and change the world. Yes, and amen. That's the message of Easter. Our hearts cry out, does my life have any meaning? And the risen Christ said, yes. And believers who know who they are and whose they are, God's people say, Amen. Our guilt-ridden spirits ask, Can I be forgiven? Our living Savior says, Yes, my grace is greater than your sin. I've covered it all with my blood and defeated it through my resurrection. And God's people who live in the freedom of forgiveness, those who walk in His grace, say, Amen. Our hearts cry out, Can I begin again? Our conquering King shouts, Yes, just as I was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, you too may live a new life. And God's people, standing upon the promise that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. God's transformed people proclaim, Amen. Our tears fall at the gravesides of those we've loved and lost. And our grieving spirits cry out to God, can we live beyond the grave? Our living Lord, through his victory over death, shouts, yes, I am the resurrection and the life. Because I live, you too shall live. And God's people, made alive by the hope that not even death will separate us from God's love, that for the Christian to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. We fill every cemetery with a shout of victory as God's people say, Amen. What heavy question are you carrying today? Today, Easter Sunday, God has given his answer. Christ is risen from the dead to say yes to every promise of God. And we, who allow his victory to become our salvation, are changed forever, and our lives proclaim in word and deed, Amen. Yes, and amen. That's the Easter message. That is the Easter miracle.